Okay, so let's walk our way up to the term minimum variance hedge ratio. So what I've done is I've plotted, uh, or I'm going to plot, uh, the hedge ratio that we select versus the variance of the position. In other words, whatever hedge ratio we select will determine the variance of our position. Now let's be clear what that means, the variance of our position. What is our position? Our position is the spot minus some hedge ratio on our futures contract. Notice I'm not saying it's the optimal one yet. The hedge ratio that we determine that we want, whether it be one for one or whether it be 70% of our, our risk, whatever, that's the position. We have a position in the futures, in the spot, long or short, with an offsetting position in the futures contract. There we go. And what we want to do is we want to minimize the variance of that position. That's what we want. So we want to select H, our hedge ratio, in such a way that it minimizes the variance of that position. Now, what are we doing when we minimize variance? We minimize risk. Remember, variance and standard deviation is a measure of risk of a position. So when we look for uh, the variance of our position, first of all, let's be clear what our position is. Our position is... The, these two offsetting situations, whether we're long or short uh, with a, uh, the asset that we have exposure to, dictates whether we're long or short with the futures contract multiplied by the hedge ratio. And this represents the variance of our position. So we want to minimize the variance of our position. So just to expand this out a bit, we know that we can calculate this. It is the variance of S plus the variance of H f the hedge ratio on the futures minus two times the correlation between the two the standard deviation of s the standard deviation of h f i'm just giving you some background don't worry too much about this but you can see how it breaks down so what we can see very clearly here and this is important what we can see very clearly here is that the variance of our position is in part a function of the hedge ratio we choose Therefore, the variance, we can say the variance, depends on the hedge ratio chosen. And what we want to do is choose this hedge ratio that minimizes this variance. So we may find that if we have a hedge ratio down here, we have a variance here. If we have a hedge ratio here, it might be here, here, over here, here, over here. So as we increase our hedge ratio to the optimal hedge ratio, we will decrease the variance of our position. As we move higher on the hedge ratio away from the optimal, we'll start to increase the variance. So we'll get a relationship that looks like this. And what we want to do is find the position that minimizes the variance of this position. That is called H star. That is the minimum variance hedge ratio. It is the optimal hedge ratio. Now, how do we find that hedge ratio? I've already told you. Right? We took the standard deviation of the spot price over the standard deviation of the asset of underlying the futures price. This would give us our hedge ratio, but since we're cross hedging, we multiply it by the correlation between the two. Our optimal hedge ratio will be the result of this. We find the correlation between the two assets, the coefficient of correlation, and we multiply it by the ratio of the standard deviation of the spot price over the standard deviation of the futures price. And we can see, I think very clearly here, that if our correlation is equal to one and the standard deviation of the spot price equals the standard deviation of the futures price, we're really talking about the same asset, we can get a hedge ratio, optimal hedge ratio would be one. So there we go, we've taken a case and we've shown that that in the most common case, the most general case, it works out to one, which is what it should work out to. This right here, is called the coefficient of correlation. I shouldn't be saying anything new here. Coefficient of correlation. You should know this from statistics. If you have not taken statistics, ouch. Uh, this course is going to be very brutal on you, and I'll tell you why. Um, this course is not about options and futures per se. 
It's not about teaching you about what an option contract is and how to use an option or what a, what a, a futures contract is and how to use a futures contract. No, no, no. That's, that's just that's a very naive reading of what we're doing here. This course is about asking where does risk lie in these contracts. If I use a, a, an option for something, where does risk lie? Because that's what it's all about. If there was no risk, there'd be no need for finance. There'd be no need for it at all. If you're studying finance, you're, it's the study of risk. Not the study of the financial asset itself, but the study of the risk behind that financial asset. Where does risk lie? So if you haven't got a good grounding in statistics, you're not going to understand risk, period. Stop now. Go back and do that. So anyways, this is the, the, co the coefficient of correlation. And if you square the coefficient of correlation, you get uh, an R squared. That's your typical R squared. And R squared is a measure of explanation. So when we regress one variable on another and we get an R squared of 0.9, let's say, we can say that the existence of one variable, the movement in that one variable, explains 90% of the movement in the other variable. It's, it, it's, it's, uh, meant, it's spoken of that way. So the R squared here is our hedge effectiveness, in other words. If it's a measure of explanation, it's also a measure of our hedge effectiveness. And that means it is the proportion of variance, the proportion of the variance eliminated by hedging. So if we get a, a, co a coefficient of correlation of 0.9, that means that the R squared is 0.81. So we have an 81% hedge effectiveness. 81% of the variance of the position is eliminated by hedging at the optimal hedge ratio. So long-winded explanation to get there. I know that it's only two or three pages in the chapter, and it seems to breeze over it rather quickly. And most students get the idea that I understand hedging. I know what hedging is. But you may know what hedging is, but if you don't understand the risk of hedging, and especially with cross-hedging, then you don't understand hedging. You don't understand it because it's not a matter of saying, well, hedging is taking an offsetting position against another thing. That's not an understanding of hedging. That's a definition of hedging. An understanding of hedging is an understanding of the risk underlying hedging. So now that we've gotten to here, so what? Well, from here, we can determine our optimal number of contracts. If we know what our optimal hedge ratio is, now we're ready to talk about our optimal number of contracts. This is just an easy step. If our hedge ratio of n star, our optimal number of contracts will be n star. It is simply our optimal hedge ratio multiplied by the quantity of the asset being hedged to the quantity of the futures contract. So this is the quantity of the asset being hedged. And this is the quantity or the size of one futures contract. So let's just get rid of the hedge ratio here for a minute. Let's say that the hedge ratio is 1. And let's say that the quantity of the asset being hedged is 2,000 barrels of oil. And the quantity, the size of one futures contract, is 1,000. So if we are hedging out 2,000 barrels of oil and each contract is for 1,000, 2,000 divided by 1,000 is 2 times the hedge ratio. If, it's a, if it, the hedge ratio is 1, then our optimal number of contracts is 2. But if our hedge ratio is 2, our optimal number of contracts suddenly becomes 4. So the best way to look at our optimal number of contracts is to actually look at an example. Let's go to the spreadsheet. Well, here we are. We're going to use an example that's uh, in the textbook. And what, what I've done is I've just replicated the data. We have months 1 through 15. And for those, we have sets of observations. We have a change in the futures price versus a change in the spot price. Our spot asset is jet fuel. Our futures asset is heating oil because there is no jet fuel contract. So we have 15 one-month observations for each. 
So the first thing we need to do before we con uh, consider what our optimal number of contracts is, notice here that we need to, we need to hedge against 2 million gallons of jet fuel. Each contract for heating oil represents 42,000 gallons. So if we were doing a straight one-to-one -one hedge, we would use 48 contracts on heating oil to hedge against 2 million gallons of jet fuel. Since the airline is a buyer of jet fuel, it is basically short jet fuel all the time because it has to buy it, it would be long 48 contracts of heating oil on a one-to-one. -one. Now that is a naive uh, hedge. That is saying, well, we'll just hedge it out. Somebody who doesn't know what they're doing would do 48. Does that make sense given the relationship between the two prices? Let's find out. First thing we want is we want to calculate the standard deviation of each of these uh, uh, of price changes. So uh, in Excel, it's just the STD uh, EVA. Notice I'm not using the dot S. That's for a sample. This is not a sample. It's the entire population of, of price changes for those 15 months. So we're using STD EVA. Click on that. And it wants an array. So we highlight our array and we can hit enter and there's our standard deviation uh, of the average uh, price change uh, over 15 months and we can just basically we don't have to calculate it we could just drag it across because we want the standard deviation of the next series as well now for correlation between the two it's C O R R and you can see uh, E L I've used it before and we need two arrays here's one array correlation between this hit comma and here's the next array that we need and just hit enter and there's our correlation and it calculates our hedge ratio for us and just to show you how this was calculated to begin with let's just clear the cell and uh, and and we'll just uh, redo it shall we so we know that it is the correlation of coefficient multiplied by the ratio of the standard deviation uh, on s divided by the standard deviation on f enter and the cell below it is just uh, uh, the hedge ratio rounded to two decimal places that's all it is so 0.77765 etc 0.78 so now we're ready to calculate the optimal number of contracts and we see here that it comes to 37 how did we get that number well we took the 0.78 and we multiplied it by 48 contracts We've already got our required needs divided by the contract size. So here's our exposure divided by the size of one contract. Typically, we'd require 48 to completely hedge that out. But since our hedge ratio is 0.78, we just multiply the 0.78 by 48, round up, or round down, round to the nearest contract, we get 37. So we should be long 37 heating oil contracts given the relationship between the price movements in heating oil versus the price movement in jet fuel that is the optimal number of contracts we need based on our optimal hedge ratio that minimizes the variance of our position if we go with 48 we end up actually with more risk in the hedge than if we use 37 and remember Finance is all about managing the risk of a position, not really just telling me what the definition of a position is. So if all you can do is tell me the definition of a hedge, you don't get this. You must tell me what the risk of the hedge is and how to manage that risk. This is how it's done. This is where finance lies.